Welcome back to another painting session, and not just any session, another tutorial session for my spray painting. I will bestow some knowledge onto you all about how to make a gas giant texture planet. What that means is the last tutorial painting was based on linear cloud shaped planets. This one will be more like a gaseous giant, like the texture seen on Jupiter, Saturn, and other gas giants like them. Now let me just get the rim here done. Now I am going to paint this first and explain it a bit more later as I'll have much more to talk about while it dries, as it will take some time, but I still want to record while it's drying. So, like I said the last tutorial, if you have not seen that, I went into depth about how you should handle your cans, how you should treat them, care for them, clean them, what have you. As without these, I wouldn't be able to make any of these. So you have to take very good care of them. But I'll have the um, too long didn't read version for you all. If you want uh, lower pressure, thinner paint, shake less. If you want higher pressure, thicker paint, shake more. Always shake regardless though. <clears throat> Have good hand placement. Spritz, don't continuously spray as it will block up the cap, which only comes one per can. It's pretty difficult to get them in bags, just like the factory caps. So um, that's the TLDR from it all. So I'll have light coming from here, just like the last painting. And I have a similar direction, so it's be going like this. Now I already had my newspaper here. I did the same thing as it I did on the last painting. Again, if you have not seen that painting, I do heavily advise that you all see it, as it is quite informative in my opinion. Uh, the texture that I used for that planet is a texture that I use for many of my planets, and it's just the groundwork of what you should be doing when you want to do something like this. How you get a consistent flow of paint onto the paper and have a good, clean, crisp texture along with smooth shading for your planets. Not just that, but the space around it, being able to meld together pretty well in themes of color, formation, and textures. I'll talk about a little bit more of it today. But of course, if you want to know more, that video would be your stop. I'll be more talking about your handling of the newspaper itself in this video. Now, as you can see, I am having a different type of layering. When it comes to these, you don't need to have top-down layers, you just need a gradient for this type of stuff. But of course, up top, you should still use something like that, a top bright, uh, bright shade. <clears throat> Once you have all that down, have a can of gloss coat. It doesn't have to be gloss, but I just use it as it is my preferred texture for my paints. Uh, it could be matte, satin, flat, what have you, but I just use gloss. And spray that down here, it doesn't really matter how you spray it, just have a consistent texture. Now I'll talk more about how you handle the newspaper here when it's drying, but I'll say something here. Just look carefully of how I lay it down, I flatten it. First of all, I'm gonna try to weight this down first. I have my hand down and how I am moving the newspaper. I'm going over it again. I'm moving my hand to cover the newspaper to get the right pressures on. Doing it again. This should be the last pass. This, as you can see, it is sticking. The paper is moving along with the newspaper. Now I'll do just one more pass on the bottom left. Right there, I 
a little bit more. There we go. Um, I'll do a bit more up top here just to cover my bases. And up top here, as the planet will be quite big. Okay. And that should be good. I right, see here, most of the paint was laid down on the side here. As you only need to use this portion, this portion, to scrape it, to have the texture. But I use the excess amount for a grips, or to have an extension so I don't get my hand wet and I have good distance between my left hand, which is on the newspaper, and my right hand, which is pulling the newspaper. All right, now we have this. We now have to shade. Like I said, I'm going to be using a thinner paint shade, so I'm gonna shake a li little bit less. That's it. I did shake beforehand, so I would wager like four or five good shakes. Um, if you have been letting your can sit out for a very long time, make sure uh, unstick the, the ball, the ball bearing. How you do that is you tip it upside down and you tap it like this until it loosens up. Okay. Now see how I am applying the shade. It's a bit too high pressure, in my opinion. Okay, now that I have that down, I'm going to have my gloss coat on it. To finalize it. There we go. See, pretty good. I have this, ah, I'll keep it there. And this is the stencil, as you saw, this big. So that's how I, I had to cover my bases. Now, as we wait for this thing to dry, I might skip forward if it's taking too long, which it probably will. Oh, because I put gloss coat on it, it will most likely take about 20 to 30 minutes, which is the norm in this weather. If it's very hot weather and you did not put a gloss coat on it, expect uh, 15 or so minutes. In hot weather with gloss coats, expect 15 to 20 minutes. Of course, that's just when my experience. Just take it all with a grain of salt. <clears throat> so, as you can see, the tent here, the shading is smooth. There is no visible spots where there's high pressured paint on there. What that means is there's no big globs or dots of paints spattered across the board. That is caused by, again, high pressured paints. If you spray it for too long, or if you shake it for too long, if the cap is backed up, if there's not enough solvents, what have you. Um, so I'll talk about how I handled the newspaper and I'll have this to the side. Try and let dry. Okay. Give me a moment while I get the newspaper. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to move this a bit further. So excuse me while I move this a bit. Very good. All right. This newspaper is just a normal everyday page of newspaper. Doesn't need to be anything special about it. There are variants though. There's normal paper and then there's gloss paper. Let me have an example for you if I could find it. Well, it seems I don't have any at the moment. Or it's just hiding somewhere because um, newspaper that's glossed over. It's a bit more rare than normal thin newspaper, but it doesn't matter. I I'd like to use a thin, non 
coated newspaper as it has more nuanced textures that you could cr crumple and crinkle into it. And I'll show you how you do that right now. So you could go along with me right now or you could just take notes if you'd like. Now, how you start this off is of course, this is depending of how big your planet is because the length or the width of this newspaper is longer than the length or height here. So if you wanted to say, maybe you wanted to have here, then do it like that. If you wanted to do this, then do it like that. It all changes. If you wanted to have a texture going this way, then you would have the texture going along parallel of how you'd want the textures where my hand is going here. And with the inverse, same here. But I will just have this over here. Now, take this, fold over, make sure don't seal this yet. Don't have a seam right now. So you have this, I'll just move this up. Have this, have a side here. Fold it over again. So it is now in quarters folded. And do it once more in eighths. You take this roll, with your hands, and then you start pressing down. You see here that there's a seam now, pretty faint, as I didn't have a lot of pressure. What I am doing is just this little fold here. I'm putting my fingers here, folding over them to grip down. You do this while turning the newspaper over. Once that's done, you should have something like this. A relatively thin stick of newspaper. Once you're done having your textures on it, simply unravel it. And this is your texture. In lines, uh, lines parallel to each other with varying depths and lengths. Very good. You would simply then use this. And I'll just have it like this. Hold your hand here as, uh, as pressure. If you want more pressure, if you want it to have less texture, then have more pressure. If you want it to have less texture, then lift up a bit more. Nonetheless, there should be some amount of pressure here. And you have your left hand here, or you could inverse it if you're a left-handed individual. I am right-handed, so I have it like this. As I will use my right hand to grab it and move and pull it away. And as you're moving it away, you should see the texture it leaves behind to see if it's good or not. Now make sure you're moving in a straight line. Of course, if you want it to be twirling over here, then of course you do that. But usually if you have this texture, you would like to have it in a smooth and straight uh, orientation. So you have it like this, then you move. You have a few more passes as my hand is only big enough to cover so much amount of space. So I move it down there. Now do take heed when you have your hand like this, there's going to be gaps in your pressure, namely the middle of the palm. You see there's an arch here. You have a good pressure in the base of the palm and the joints of your fingers. But on upper palm, you're not gonna have that much. So do make sure in that region over here, it's not gonna be as textured as here and here. That's why you might wanna move it from time to time. Just make sure they have the textures right. If you have a good enough texture, it should stick to the paint and move pretty flawlessly. And this is where the gloss comes in. I mean, like a lot of gloss, so it moves just like water perfectly fine. Though, you should make sure that there should be no debris 
or any mistakes happening alongside you making a texture. If there was, say, uh, a tennis ball that would touch the, um, the paper, the chances are very high it will make, if it was on your planet, chances are very high that it's going to mess it up a lot. As with enough gloss, the consistency will be similar to water, olive oil. Uh, with little gloss, it would be like maple syrup. Um, but when you're making this, it should be the texture of olive oil. If it's too much, it would be the consistency of very thin water. Uh, and that's not good. It will be too easily swayed. It should be something like, again, olive oil or something a bit thicker than that. Water consistency is too thin, maple syrup too thick. Olive oil for normal vegetable oil or oil consistency is just right. Good form to it, it dries faster, it moves better, you have more control over it, uses less material, it's great. So that's the too long didn't read for that. When I just said, go for oil consistency for your paints when making a gas giant texture. I don't know what scientific name or special name I'd give that, maybe gaseous texture, I don't know, swirling texture, I don't know. But I'll have the painting up here for example, so you can see. You can see all of them, I'm going in a straight line here. There's some ups and downs, but overall, it is very linear, very parallel to each other. Now you see that there's indents, changes in color, sway, motion, length, depth, what have you. It's different as the color you put into it and the pressure dictates what the color, uh, depth of the streaks, shape of the streaks, size, length, all of that is dictated by the colors you use how much color you use, how much gloss you use, the pressure of your newspaper, every little thing creates something like that. You should be thinking about everything and not be careless when making this. Of course, in terms of other type of painting styles, this is a bit more carefree, as you have a lot of room to err, as you can only control so much, and that's perfectly fine. And there's a magic in this randomness, in this, in making these planets. But you should always aim to make something great, whether it be random or not. That's what I do. Now, to check um, the condition of the paint to see if it is dry or not, go for the outskirts. What I mean by that is I'm going to have the stencil about in the middle, like here. And you see, this paint over here will not be covered. So I'm going to take my finger here, go over it a little bit, and I know here, very sticky. Not a lot of pressure, but still sticking across and you see it moved here. So it still needs a bit more time. So if during this point, this is probably the halfway mark, if you have enjoyed this video so far, if I've taught you my fair share even up to this point, I hope that you would comment on the video what you like about the video and even the painting and how I am teaching you all how to do these things. Um, tell me if I'm doing a good job, tell me if I'm not. Both of those will help me to make better tutorials and better paintings and uh, be a better presenter for these things and overall. Uh, if you like what I do, the spray painting type stuff, subscribe to the channel as I post almost every day. It is very good to be notified if you're interested in this type of thing, especially if you'd like to do it yourself as you learn quite a lot from these videos, I think anyway. Um, and just a simple like is enough too. Though I really do like to read those comments, I really do. If you have any um, suggestions of things I could make, landscapes, what have you, uh, do please tell me how I'd like to consider it. Uh, maybe a, a little few touches to it, but that will be it, the extent to it. Overall, I'll try to keep to what you all suggest to me. Now, um, I'm just going to wait a little bit. There's not much for this that I haven't already bestowed upon you in lessons. 
for this particular thing. I'll wait a few bit longer, five, ten minutes, what have you. And we'll cut right back to it. Shouldn't take long. Of course for you it would just be a, a snap and you're there. But for me I'll just wait a bit longer. I think crazy. But see you then. And now it's all dry and I got the stencil on there. Now I will say this, that when this is, even if it's been dry for quite some time, don't have a lot of weight on it. Like I said on the previous tutorial, it's never a good idea to have a lot of weight on a stencil like this, unless you are certain, double, triple, quadruple checked, that it will not stick. We'll find out if it sticks or not. I don't think it will, but it might. <clears throat> so anyways, I got that down. So now I'm going to have a fairly bright outside. It would be a bit too jarring to have a very dark space around it. So I'm gonna get one paint, I'll be right back. Okay. Now the paint I'll be using is chestnut brown. It's just normal traditional brown color, maybe a bit lighter. I'll be using this for the base coat. There'll be a few more, of course. So we start spraying. Like I was saying earlier, spritz. Spritz, spritz, spritz. And never do a continuous spray. You could, but you have to be very controlled in how you do it. Because you don't want a lot of areas to be in um, uh, dense in paint while others aren't. And that's what I'm doing here, because I could see whether it is glossed over or not, if it's a good amount of paint. Once I have that good consistency I'm looking for, I'll go over to the next paint. Nutmeg. I'll just spray this around. No particular order just like last painting or last tutorial or just spritz the green around the very dark face but this will be a bit different this is when you can just spray around because you don't really need that much consistency around now I'm going to turn over to khaki do the exact same thing Start with spritzing, see how that goes. Goes pretty well. Have some dense areas of this. There we go. Very good. Now, next step will be the stars and comets. In the fifth theme, I will not be using the, the light, um, light off white. I'll be using gold because it will look very good with a very light brown at the planet. You don't always want to use the exact same color for the the top tint of or the highest color of your planet and also use that color for the stuff around it. When you a bit more varied than that, you can have a shade up or down of that, but you could be a bit different. Don't do, don't do it too uh, differently though. It's either you go like a shade up and down, um, the highest shade of the, the brightest shade of your planets, or you use just white or off white. Or you do something I'm gonna do and have metallic stars. Now, there's three types I could use. It'll be bronze, silver, and gold. And to fit the theme, I'll be using gold. Gold goes along well with the light browns and yellows. Bronze goes very well with reds, dark browns, and oranges. And 
Silver goes very well with blue and greens. Now you might notice that you're not seeing my hand a lot while I'm spraying it over and that's because I'm having a good distance away as the more distance you have from your flip it, from your hand to the painting that gives a lot more time for air to cut the little dots that you're spraying on the painting, making them smaller and more nuanced. I think that's good. Now I am going to add a bit of comets. There won't be a lot, maybe like three or so, maybe four. I'm just gonna get my comets creator right here. Now I will not be using gold here as it wouldn't fit what the comets are. But I will be using the light, it is the shade of off-white. This shade that. Now take notice of where I spray on this, the comet creator. Now half of it is a clean seam, the other is curved. There's a reason for that, the curved side is the catch. It catches the paint, the paint goes all the way down through the crevice to the sharp points of the bottom. And I will demonstrate that here. See, very sharp edges. Make sure after every few spritz, every few spritzes, you clean it off, clean it upwards like I've taught you from the last video. I'll be referencing that video a lot as I will the next tutorial. Okay, I'm gonna have one more on top left. Here, right there, very good. Now let's see if I put the stencil on too early or not. Now, what makes this very appealing spray painting is because when you make planets, you have a moment of truth. Because you can only know how the plant may look only when the stencil is removed with the space outside. You could get a good idea what it looks like just with the texture alone, but only when it contrasts the space around it is when its true colors come out. Not just that, you can see if you made any mistakes, if you put it on too early or not, if it sticks. And right now, we're gonna find out. In three, two, one. Looks like I did it at the right time. See? Very good. Much different than the texture you saw before the stencil was laid on. Now, a few finishing touches. Get my signature. And this painting will be done. No painting is complete without a signature. It must have a creator after all. That's where the signature comes in. And that's it. That's the painting for today's tutorial. I hope that you all have learned something from today. I hope that I have passed down some knowledge to you all. And if you wish to share with me your progress in spray painting, do make sure to tell me. I'd love to see what you all have been up to, especially if you've been taking notes from my little videos. And if you just like the video, or if you've learned something special today, nonetheless, like the video, take some time out of your day to comment on this video, comment what you like, what you don't like, both compliments and criticisms, both help me to become a better painter and a better teacher for you all. With that out of the way, I hope that if you like what I do, of course, subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with what I am up to almost every day. And with that out of the way, I hope that all of you have again enjoyed tonight's painting session. And until next time, bye-bye.